Knoxville, thank you for staying tuned with us. And this is Real Estate with Ryan, and I am your host, Ryan Coleman, Hometown Realty. My wife couldn't be here today. We've got the little one, so it's solo. Me and John in the studio today. So thank you guys for staying with us, and we're going to try to give you a great show. Hope everybody's over the snow. I know we are. It looks like we've got great temperatures coming forward, and uh, as long as the government gets things straight, we'll be okay. So I think they're going to shut down. And uh, how will that affect the real estate market coming up? Where is that? Will that affect government loans, FHA, VA? things like that. We're not sure. We got some calls in. I know USDA is a government loan as well, so there may be some effect there. Hopefully, they get their act together and uh, do what's best for us, the American people, but uh, we seem to go around this every couple of years having this issue, so hopefully no issues there, but we'll keep you up to date as those things change. We've got calls into our lenders. You can always stay updated on our Facebook page to get the up-to-date information. Will that affect our real estate here in Knoxville if you're closing on an FHA VA loan? Um, something you need to know and we'll give you that up-to-date information so make sure you're following our page if you're here on Facebook uh, saying hi to everybody that's on Facebook we appreciate you following us again you're listening to talk radio 92.3 FM AM 760 where we're here real estate with Ryan every Saturday live in the studios rain snow or shine me and John are here and uh, we're gonna bring you up-to-date knowledge here on the real estate market so our topic today is a good one you have to bear with me. I got a little bit of a froggy voice today. It's one of those days, and that's what you get when it's live. So thank you guys for dealing with Kermit here. <laughs> so listen, we're talking about for sale by owners in the market, tips you need to know, pros and cons, and the advantages in the marketplace and how that would affect you. Obviously, we know for sale by owners, uh, if you're not familiar with that term, it just means that they're selling it without an agent and what you need to know. And there are so many conceptions. We know we set record numbers. We went over some um, stats in our show the other day that the surrounding area hit record highs, 22,000 plus. So those are numbers we haven't seen since 02 and 03. And so with those numbers, very, very few percentage were for sale by owner. And you say, why is that? And, um, you know, I'm with everybody. Look, we all want to save the most money. And if we can save money by avoiding commission or any kind of fees, who wouldn't do that? We have to understand that that's normal. I would do the same thing and I'm in real estate. But stats are gonna say, that if you have a home that's marketed and it has exposure by the right agent you now and it's aggressively pushed into the market space, competition is going to make a big difference. So competition is going to increase demand. You know, when there's less competition, obviously that affects your lower price. So more demand on the home, market it right, then you're going to get it open faster, not only so faster for more money, ultimate exposure, and it's probably a seamless process. Now, that being said, there is are for some for sale by owners that are able to get that property sold in a fairly reasonable time, and they are able to have success. But the vast majority say that the stats are going to say that if you list with an agent that is aggressive and is promoting your home in the marketplace, you're now going to get more money. You're going to sell it quicker and less hassle. So what are the stats? We did a stat that we talked about last week that the average for sale by owner across the country, <clears throat> bear with me, across the country, Average list price, $240,000. Average net price for sale by owner, one eighty five. So dramatically less than a couple percentage points on commission. So something to think about. Another thing I think, if you're gonna have the home on the market, there's some pros and cons and things that you need to, to look at in an advantage place. And when you're negotiating with a for sale by owner, or you are a for sale by owner, and you have your home on the market and you're listening to this program, some things that are some tips that are very helpful. Number one, um, it's very, very important if you do have a buyer call to watch out for who, who you're letting in your home. You know, we never know who you're getting off Craigslist or Zillow. We just don't know who we are. Make sure they're pre-qualified. Make sure you have a pre-approval letter that they've spoken to a lender before they walk through the property. You know, that just shows we got a more qualified buyer. They're serious about their financing. Maybe they're working with another realtor. Get the name of that realtor. Give them a buzz so you know who you're dealing with. 
you know, especially if you're a single individual, senior, you don't want to go meet somebody at the property. You have no idea who you're showing up against, and uh, you just don't know. So i um, not trying to scare you, but I want you to just understand it's a crazy world that we live in, and you need to have those facts and things like that. And, and we obviously check them out when they're working with us, so we handle all that for you. Things to know. Um, you know, don't, I'd say if you have the home on the market for sale by owner, and maybe you've had past performances that you've been very successful with in the market of selling that before two or three times. Know the numbers are not in your favor, and not that you can't do it, but no, let's not let's think outside the box. Most buyers, there's a lot of traffic here in East Tennessee that comes here. And most people that don't know the area, the first thing they're gonna do is get with an agent, a strong agent that knows the market and that's gonna help them, guide them, and put them in the right position. Listen, if I just got transferred from Texas or just relocated, the last thing I'm going to do is, is search 10,000 listings on the line and try to find that specific home. I, mean, I need somebody to service. There's a reason that the service industry is there because people that are busy in time, they just don't have the time or they just haven't done the transactions and the experience. So you're getting a lot of agents experience in the marketplace and there's value to have not, you know, I, I use this example, John, I don't know if you fish much, but every now and then I try to get a, get, get a little fishing in and and you never know what day that you're out there, what what it's gonna, you know, whether the bass, what it's gonna hit on. But you've got a whole lure box of, of lures, and every different day could be a different variety. The real estate market is very, very similar. You never know where that buyer is coming from. So you know, you can't have one or two approaches. And that may just draw a small market of buyers that are coming in. When you open that marketplace, it just it, it, you just would be amazed about the activity and traffic that you're seeing. And the biggest thing I think we see, John, is uh, John's our producer here, if you don't know. So we're chatting with him there. Sorry about that. But I think the biggest thing that we see is that uh, they have their home on the market and maybe the, the sellers lower their price. I think that's the biggest thing. Are they leaving money on the table? And they're thinking because it's on Zillow, they've had some calls from the agents and uh, they lower their price. My experience with Zillow, my experience with Zillow. The homes are normally already off the market. I mean, you can't rely on Zillow. I'm trying to give you an estimated cost. I wouldn't underestimate the price on this home. And especially if I'm living into a market, if I'm living into a city, I don't know. You, you mentioned that you need to be hard to live off the market. Uh -huh. Right. If I'm moving in, and I don't know any, everyone out. Right. You, what do you do to make sure? Well, I, th I think the first thing is what we're doing this show is we want to, you know, as an agent or somebody that's in the marketplace, we've got to advertise, we've got to promote and market, right? You know, it, the old saying that they don't know you, they can't do business with you, right? And so I think the biggest thing is what we're trying to do is to push ourselves into the marketplace and while we're doing this show and spending a lot of time and effort is so that they have an option. Most people in the real estate market, if they don't, they don't know who to go to. They have their friends, you know, everybody in the market right now has a real estate license and everybody's doing it, but, but five or seven years ago, goes that was changing so we have a lot of people that are in the profession that are part-time a lot of times that uh, not that that's bad but you know they're just not having some of that experience that some of the guys that have been doing it for 20 years and so I think the biggest thing is where do the consumers turn and I, and I think you know you've got all kind of sources you've got the Zillow the truly is you know if you look out there everybody's got a five-star rating right you know I mean that's I mean you can't really trust that I mean so how do you do that I think you've got to interview at least we, we always talk about we want to be your trusted source and we want to be an opportunity but I think you got to interview a couple agents now always think face-to-face -face or a phone consultation, especially if you're coming in, you get a good feel for somebody. And then, of course, references are important. You know, if you had somebody here recently in the last couple of months, and I can give you some references, and they relocated in Texas and um, things like that, I think will be a big advantage. So, um, but I think, you know, more than anything, you need somebody that knows the market, and we want to cut down on time, especially if you're looking at a certain time frame, whether you're getting in by school time or out by school time, that's important to understand. And uh, you need somebody that's and guide you kind of weed out the properties on Zillow or Realtor.com or some of those that are not there that, that make sense. So I, I think going back to that for sale by owner topic, um, we talked about walking through the property. That's important. I think the next thing, let's say for some reason you're able to get a contract, uh, most important, the details and in the contract, you need to cover those details. What's important? Um, the language is always in the contract. One of the biggest tips, if you're a for sale by owner, and a lot of my customers see that, uh, that we were able to help for sale by owner 
and actually list with us and get it sold. They had a lot of calls. We call them looky loose. So we get a lot of buyers that are looking, maybe just not as serious, maybe not as curious. Sometimes when that for sale by owner sign goes up, the first thing that they see is buyers say, well, I have an opportunity to work directly with the seller. But what they're really saying is they get opportunity to get a better deal. You know, my friend Dave Ramsey says, you know, there's a reason that most of the homes sell or listed with an agent and that, that where we're still in the business because you're good, the numbers and the stats say that if you list with a good, strong agent that's doing, you know, high volume of business and that knows the market and pushes it out into the marketplace, you're going to net more money. We just went over the stats in the beginning part of the show regarding that. And so uh, a lot of people don't understand that. So I, I think, you know, buyers think that the buyer and the seller can save on the commission. And that's not the case. Most of the time when I see buyers come through and they deal with the for sale by owner from the get go, they're taking five to 6% right off the list price. So that's always to an advantage where if I'm a for sale by owner and I'm selling the home myself, my goal is to put the most money in my pocket, hands down. And if I can save on a commission and do that, that's very possible. A lot of times the buyers have that mentality as well. They know that there's less competition. There's not multiple offers. So they feel like they can get a better deal. What usually I see is if we have the home on a market and we don't have that second opportunity. And so what I'm saying, I'm not saying that you shouldn't try it on the market. There's always that opportunity, but we should always have an opportunity for plan B that if, if what you're working is not doing the same thing, let's look at an opportunity. We always want to be your source for that. Our consultations are free. We can talk to you anytime that you like and let you know really what the market is and what we can do. And then you can compare what you're doing now for sale by owner, if it makes sense and if not, we have another option to do that. So let's go on some more of the tips that we're talking about. Let's say you're able to get an inspection. We do an inspection. The first thing is very, very important. Make sure if you're doing an inspection, you open the doors and get out of there. You know, a lot of times the sellers like to follow the home inspector around and uh, actually kind of go through the property with them and follow them. The buyers want to be there with their home inspection. They want to be there with them. They want to be able to talk freely, place the furniture um, throughout their rooms and things like that. Look, we're going to come up on a hard break, and but uh, we're going to talk more about tips, things you need to know, things that are scams out there that you're dealing with for sale owners, and really what you need to do to maximize more money. Thank you for staying with Real Estate with Ryan. I'm Ryan Coleman, your host, and we're going to catch you on the other side of the break. In the competitive real estate market, Ryan Coleman has a track record with guaranteed results. Ryan made the sale of our home seamless. He was there every step of the way. And our home sold the first week for full price. With his knowledge and expertise, he took away all our worries. And he got us much more money than we had ever expected. Ryan is so confident that he will sell your home, he's willing to put his own money on the line. If he can't sell it in the time frame agreed upon up front, he'll buy it himself. Ryan Coleman with Hometown Realty. Your home sold, guaranteed. Hey guys, this is Real Estate with Ryan, and I'm your host, Ryan Coleman. Thank you for staying with us. And the topic that we're talking about is for sale by owners. I want you guys to please make sure that you're feel, feel free to call anytime on our show. That's 865-888-TALK. That's 865-888-TALK. And that's any question, whether regardless of our topic today, we'll be glad to cover your calls uh, live on the air and help you with any of your real estate needs, whether um, we're involved or not. We want to be a trusted source for your real estate information and how we can help you. Jack? Sure. A young couple said that they heard that they used to own a home to spend two or three years in their homes and say, oh, they own a home in another state. And then they understood when they got a first time buyer's uh -huh. discount. And they heard that if they were out with a home, that's true. I think the lenders have a three to five year, I think it's a five year gap that if you're considered a new homeowner up to five to seven years in that range, usually five years. Each state's going to vary, uh, so it just depends. But uh, there's a lot of options out there. So if you're looking for the first time programs that was back a couple years ago, Fannie Mae has opened up a new program with a 1% down conventional. Yeah, it's new. When the market's increasing, the lenders are obviously wanting to get more loans and back in the volume. So Fannie Mae's got a good program. It still has mortgage insurance. It's still pretty high. But if you're limited on cash and it's a first-time home and the market's in a good area, we can get you in that property. I've got a great lender that can help you get into that property. And then if you had to refinance down the road, but 1%, 3%, FHA is really good. And we have 100% for our veterans. And then some of our counties that are, you know, Severe County, Knox County, we've got 100% USDA financing. So it's a 
a lot of options out there. So five years here in Tennessee. Five years in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. It, of course, the lenders have guidelines. They have something that uh, have o called overlays. So what the lender may have overlays is, let's say, SunTrust. Uh, Fannie Mae has a guideline, but there's an overlay, meaning SunTrust may add other conditions on top of that because they're holding the portfolio. So um, every lender is different. That's why I always really encourage you to give us a call because we have a lot of the access that uh, a lot of the customers maybe are not, and we'll save you a lot of time and energy with that. Good question there, John. Let's get back on the for sale by owners and talking about some of the tips and things that you need to know if you're selling the home and things that we can hopefully help you if you're doing that. And uh, so we talked about, number one, don't get scammed. If you're going to be on Craigslist, just know uh, that attracts all types of people and make sure you pre-qualify them and know who you're meeting at your home. Ask them how long they've been looking, how long have they been looking for homes, and uh, get a sense if they're serious, because somebody that's serious in the marketplace is usually looking for a couple months and they're out, not a couple years, and so that's a big red flag. Ask them, do they have an agent? Knowing if you're going to work with a for sale by owner, know if you're dealing with that agent, um, the challenge with that, and know that up front so that you're not coming on the back end to know if they have an agent and they bring them in uh, with that. One thing I like to talk about to my clients with for sale by owners and is if you have it on the market, and they bring an agent. Really what you're looking at is um, do you want to get into a battle with the agent if you're offering commission? If you are selling the home, you definitely want to understand that there may be an agent involved and so that there may be commission either way. The challenge with that and the biggest thing that I see is if you have it for sale by owner and we have to understand that the agents, let's just be honest, they're not pushing the for sale by owners. And the reason being is not just the pricing and the commission. And I'm telling you the vast majority, and they, nobody's gonna tell you that that's not the case, but let's get real, they're not, they're not. Number one, some of the sellers make it very difficult to access the property. Number two, they've got a buyer that's transferred in very uh, quickly and needs something, and they don't wanna take a buyer to a property and it gets into a advantageous situation. Not saying all of them are like that, but those are challenges. And you have to think about it. The, the, everybody's gonna go with the easiest flow. And if they've done a deal with an agent that they have a great relationship with and we've networked for over the years, they're going to want to work with that agent. It just makes the transaction easier. So that's why I say, I mean, um, you may have some agents that do that. We obviously will help you sell anything that's out there, but at the same time, you have to understand that there's some pushback in that. And so that may be restricting your market. It may restrict showings. And, you know, at the end of the day, if there's four or five homes in the subdivision, it's all about who's coming through the front door, right? It's not about how much commission we can save. Listen, guys, never get into where how much you can save, how much I want for the home. So many times I say, well, I want this, and then I want to save this. You know, I, I wish I could wave the magic wand. It's never what you, you know, what you want. It's what the buyers in the market are willing to pay. You know, real estate is always about a seller and a buyer coming together. Our job is to bridge that gap and to help you maximize your return and uh, put the most money in your pocket. And that's the goal for you yourself, selling for sub owner. You want to put the most money in your pocket for your family. You've earned it. You deserved it. And we know the, the economy and the way that goes. And it doesn't take long to spend money. So I'm with you there. I just want to give you an opportunity that if you have the home in the market to give you a better option, you know, a better option to do things and to increase more money. The stats, the numbers all say that if you have a great agent that's pushed down the marketplace, that you're going to net more money. Now, every time that's not the case. And some people have been fortunate. They're able to sell the property, but don't get into, I've sold a home. I had a customer that we talked to the other day and he said, well, you know, I've sold three or four homes for sale by owner by myself because my neighbor's been in the market for five years. Okay. So I'm with you on that, but just because you've been successful in the prior doesn't mean that a couple of homes sold that we, we looked at 22,000 homes that were sold last year and that's with agents. Very small amount were listed with for sub bar and got the price. Not that it can't be done, but I just want you to understand the numbers. So I'm all about putting ahead. Listen, forget the commission. Let's focus with what you're going to walk away with, how much money you're going to take to Texas or to your next home, and let's see if we can make numbers work. And that's what I always try to tell our clients. And or think about that if you have it on the market, that you understand that there's a lot that goes into that, and to keep that in mind, that's what we're walking away with not how much commission we're saving. It's the check at the end. So another thing that's important, if you do try to sell it yourself, make sure you don't put in the contract and or 
us signs. What that means is real estate investors are typical. They come in here with an offer and they'll try to assign it to Joe Blow or whoever, which means it's in the legal paperwork. They can just assign it to anybody, effectively put a contract down and uh, just waste your time. You can move out of the home. Everything's empty. You're ready to close on your next home and they've assigned it to somebody else. So we see that a lot of times. Never take a cashier's check or any kind of earnest money from a buyer directly, okay? There's scams out there where they will come in and write you a check for certified or money order for let's say 4,000, 2,000 deposit, and then they'll say, hey, well, I overwrote it, and then can you write me that check back? It's a bad check, it's a fake check, and it's a scam. And so make sure that you're not falling into that uh, program. <clears throat> Never, never, never close anywhere except a title company or escrow company. Um, those are red flags you never want to deal with. They could get you to sign a quick claim deed, and before you know it, especially if you're a senior, you don't know what you're doing, you could sign your house over to somebody that's trying to take advantage of you. We have all kinds of horror stories. So make sure if you're going to close, you close an attorney or title company and have them to review the paperwork. It's always the devil's always in the details, right? And so the contract, if you're not writing contracts and not been in that, um, I would encourage you to make sure you get with a lawyer or somebody that can review them. If you ever honestly need our help, we'll be glad to review anything and try to help you the best of our knowledge. The challenge is when you get into contracts and reviewing them, if you're not doing it every day and know all the legal ease and things that needs to be in there, you could end up costing yourself a lot of money. So that's very, very important to make sure that you understand who's paying closing costs, who's not paying closing costs, who's paying inspections, warranties, termites, what's required, and then definitely what's required in the state of Tennessee. This, the state of Tennessee is very strict on real estate and disclosure and non-disclosure. If you don't properly disclose, I promise there's several attorneys in town that uh, they make a living off that stuff on real estate. Real estate is one of the most uh, litigious businesses in the industry, and there's a reason that uh, that is. So keep that in mind. Make sure always if you're showing the home, make sure you got everybody present. You know, um, don't. Um, don't just show to one buyer. If it's a husband and wife combo, make sure that they're there. We've got so many more tips. We may talk more about this in another show, and we just touched the iceberg. It always seems like we get on here and we go quickly. But I thank you guys for staying with us. This is Real Estate with Ryan. Every weekend, we're over here Saturday, 11 o'clock, and we're bringing you the up-to-date information on the Knoxville and surrounding market and be your trusted source. Again, you're listening to Real Estate with Ryan. It's talk radio, 92.3 FM, AM 760, every Saturday, 11 o'clock. And our phone number direct with you ever need us, it's 865-693-SOLD. That's 693-SOLD. And if you need to check me on the web, it's ryancoleman.org. As always, we appreciate your business, and we look forward to seeing you next weekend. Have a great weekend.